Hello, and welcome to this mischievous little Gemini new moon. I just feel like it's been forever since I have filmed a video. I do not know, but it does. Do not want to miss the beginning of this video because it has all the tea, okay? All the tea that you are going to need is in the beginning of this video. Then we will go over what it means for your rising sign very briefly, okay? The rising sign part is very brief because the beginning is really kind of the meat and the potatoes of this video, okay? So you don't want to miss it. I will be checking. Okay, so welcome to this new moon in Gemini video. This new moon is happening on June 17th, I believe. Let me check that really quick, actually. I was indeed not wrong. I was indeed right. This new moon is happening on June 17th, 2023. Let's talk about it. This is not your typical new moon, okay? We're going to have some interesting things happening right around this new moon that is going to make it a very interesting new beginning, okay? If there's one thing that this new moon is, it is interesting, okay? It is mischievous. It is bringing in a little bit of that Gemini trickster energy. So watch out. <laughs> there may be some things that are just not making a lot of fucking sense, okay, around this new moon. Uh, there may be some answers that you're wanting, but you're not getting. There may be some delays, some plans that do not go as you thought they were going to. Yeah, but it's all fun and games in the uh, in the sign of Gemini. So just, all you can do is just laugh about it. And uh, yeah, we'll go over it, we'll go over it, okay? Alrighty, so let's get into it, shall we? What is a new moon? Let's start there, okay? So we have a new moon happening in the sign of Gemini. What the F is a new moon to begin with? A new moon is when the sun and the moon align in the sky in the same sign. This means that the moon is overpowered, so to say, by the sun's light, and therefore the moon disappears from our perspective, from Earth's perspective. Meaning that when things disappear, space is created, and when space is created, something comes in to fill that spot, that space, right? Like a baby in the womb, like, you know, seeds being planted in the soil. We need to have this space that is created for a new beginning to happen. And from here, from the new moon forward, the moon will start building in light as a new beginning becomes, starts coming to fruition and we start seeing and reaping, uh, you know, the rewards of the seeds that we planted at this new moon. So I would say that uh, if you are somebody that does like to manifest on the new moon, this is probably not the new moon <laughs> to be setting uh, intentions unless they're like, give me some fucking clarity because this shit is insane right like this shit is confusing af those kind of intentions are good okay but if you're trying to manifest something that you need um <laughs> that you really need to be very crystal clear right now or something physical uh something that you know is going to make a whole lot of sense then this is not the new moon to do that okay like I'm just just putting it out there. Anyways, so now that we know what a new moon is, what does it mean that it is in the sign of Gemini? So Gemini is a sign that it's happening in, which tells us a little bit more about the themes that we're going to see coming up in all of our lives, no matter what sign we are for this new moon. So Gemini is an air sign. It's a mutable air sign, right? So it's basically the mental and, uh, you know, verbal realms, but it is mutable. Now, mutable means that it is shifting, alternating, it is adapting, it is going in two different directions because it is a sign that shifts us into a new season. Gemini is the start or the end of spring and it's ushering us into summer. So we are kind of in between spring and summer and that's why mutable signs are always in between you know, seasons. They're always in like ending one season and about to usher in the next, right? So that is why mutable signs are mutable signs because they're in two seasons and there can be a lot of flip-flopping and adapting and confusion and two different things happening at once, a lot of polarity, right? So Gemini does deal with a lot of polarity. It deals with two different sides. It deals with the mind and the mental realm and communication, which means that it is literally the mind going in different directions, right? Just like our minds do. We may form an opinion on something, but that opinion can later change in an hour from now, in a day from now, in a year from now, right? Like we can say, oh, I think this is what is factual. And then new evidence comes out and that changes, right? So, and this is why Geminis get a lot of the, you know, shit and the, uh, what's the word? 
I'm looking for the kind of cliche stereotypes, that's the word, that they do of like, oh, you know, like you, they're back and forth and this, that, and the other, and they say one thing and then they say another, you know, like, and this is because this sign is a representation of the beauty of evolving the mind, the way that we can change our minds very easily, the way that we can see new perceptions very easily, the way that new details and information can come in and there's not a block to it, right? If there's one thing Gemini is, it's very flexible and it's not very stubborn. It's willing to change its mind. It's willing to see new sides. It's willing to see new perspectives. It's willing to look at things in a new way and it's willing to absorb new information even if that contradicts other information, right? And so there can be a lot of contradictions with Gemini because it literally is the beauty of the ever evolving and changing mind and thoughts and mental space, right? And our ability to express that and communicate that to others. So Gemini comes with a lot of curiosity because it really wants to learn a little bit about everything. It's like a jack of all trades, master of none, right? Like it, it likes to learn and dabble in all kinds of different subjects because it wants to learn and absorb as much as it can about its environment the people around it, the uh, information around it, and how you interact with your environment and the information around you. And so this is really what Gemini is all about. It's also a very lighthearted sign because it is the sign that is ending spring and in the summer. So we're in the lighter, lighter time of the year. So it doesn't, you know, it's usually not mischievous in an intentional way, but it does like to play, <laughs> does like to uh, trick, you know, it, it can be tricky at times because it's like, you know, we say one thing and now we're saying another, you know, and so it can come across, you know, stereotypically like it is two faced, you know, or has two different sides like you hear a lot with Gemini's. But really, it's just the beauty and the fun and the play and the lightness and the childlike curiosity of being able to change your mind and being able to evolve past old perceptions and opinions. So hopefully that was a good little analysis for you. So moving on. So with that being said, this new moon in Gemini though is a little different, okay? Because we have a lot going on in the sign of Gemini. Mercury, the ruler of Gemini, which is where Gemini gets a lot of its you know, traits and themes from as a sign is in Gemini. So Mercury is here at home in Gemini. So the ruler of this new moon is at home. So this is a very Gemini new moon, like a, a double whammy of a Gemini new moon, right? We got a lot of Gemini in the house here, but the, the issue and the challenge that this new moon is going to bring up is that it is squaring the planet Saturn. <laughs> Big Daddy Saturn, okay? And Saturn is in Pisces, another mutable sign, a water, the water, the mutable water sign, right? So, I'm sorry, the new moon doesn't square Saturn, Mercury squares Saturn, right? Um, but we also have Neptune in Pisces, and Neptune is <laughs> very, very dreamy, very, very imaginative, and it doesn't really go off of details or information or facts like Gemini does. It is more about the feeling, the internal feeling of like oneness and, you know, belief and faith and being trusting, right? And sometimes even on the downside, being naive. And so this tells me that there is some kind of challenge coming in with this new moon or this new moon can come in and kind of upset previous perceptions, perspectives, and stories that maybe we were telling ourselves or living by or being told. Okay, so this new moon is coming in with a major shift in our perception and our perspective on some area of our life where maybe we were not seeing things too clearly, right? And just like the square between, you know, Gemini, this air sign, and Pisces, this water sign, this also tells me that there's a challenge here between the mental and analytical thinking uh, mind and mental space and communication and expression versus the emotional the uh, faith-based, intuitive, and creative, and imaginative, um, you know, part of us, right? And so there is some kind of challenge coming up here between our minds and the way that we think and the way that we perceive and the way that we take in and express information versus our feelings and in our intuition and, you know, this kind of desire or longing or yearning for oneness or trust or faith or forgiveness, right? And so, and sacrifice. And so these are some of the themes that we can really, really see coming up for this new moon in Gemini. So I'm gonna give you 
some other scenarios that we could really see here. So number one, Mercury is squaring Saturn for the few days before this new moon in Gemini, which is why I'm trying to do this a little earlier. Um, because on the lead up to this new moon in Gemini, we already may be noticing that we're hitting some walls, we're hitting some delays, like especially in communication, especially with our plans and details. It's like things are just not working out the way that we thought they would. Now, it's not like maybe anything huge. It's maybe like minute details in our mundane day to day lives, right? Like, oh, I had planned for this appointment at this time, but turns out it's at this time, right? Or, you know, I had planned to do this or I planned on these details for that. But that's not what's happening now, right? It's like we're or we're having a lot of miscommunications or misunderstandings uh, it can feel maybe a little bit like Mercury retrograde. Like like it's like things are slowing down and we're having trouble progressing. We're having trouble, you know, keeping the momentum flowing and plans are changing, right? We may also find that it may be a little bit more difficult to speak about our opinions or our ideas, or we may even see where we are not speaking up enough, right? Like where we're not, um, you know, expressing ourselves in a way that feels aligned and right and factual, right? So the other thing with this is that with the new moon squaring Neptune, we can tend to see a lot of like bypassing. We can tend to see a lot of blind spots. So this new moon is also coming in to really show us things that maybe we've been avoiding or not looking at or escaping. Okay, so this could really be showing us like, hey, you know, there's been all these signs that like, this is not what you think it is but we haven't wanted to listen to the logic. And, and this is why we have the Zodiac. The Zodiac represents a perfect balance between different polarities and archetypes within our world. And, you know, there is a balance in faith and trust versus being naive and continue to ignoring, you know, like what you can see, feel and touch, right? Now I am like, you know, all about having faith and trust in something higher than yourself right? But how far does one carry that when that belief is proven or that whatever is proven, it is not the right time or not the right place or not the right thing, right? Like this is how, you know, cults are created. For instance, if there was, if faith was always a great thing <laughs> and trust and belief was always a great thing, then we wouldn't have, you know, cults and uh, I mean, you know, like uh, tragic cults that end up harming people or killing themselves for this whole, you know, like idea, right? And so it's like, where are we trusting an idea or trusting, you know, um, something too much where maybe it's like not the right time or maybe we've been trusting it so much that we've been ignoring other evidence that contradicts it to the contrary, right? And so these are some of the things that we could definitely see come up, you guys. So really pay attention right now. Really be aware. Like don't ignore anything. Don't be scared to question your beliefs. Don't be scared to question your ideals and question other people right now even because this could also be depending on where this is happening in your chart and how your chart is set up this could also be somebody like playing you you know this could be somebody getting over on you just straight up this could be someone telling you lies this could be someone like <laughs> really kind of pulling the wool over your eyes you know so like i'm not saying you need to be paranoid this isn't something um that looks really vicious per se. It's just like, okay, hey, where have I not been wanting to face the facts about how I'm feeling, right? And um, different things. It doesn't mean that you have to tear down your whole belief system or not believe in what you believe in anymore or that you can't still have faith that it's going to work out, right? It just means that like right now, like this is where we're at, right? And this is how I'm feeling. And if we can be honest about that and accept the facts for what they are right now, doesn't mean it's gonna be like this forever. That is when we can evolve with this new moon, right? And not be avoidant, not be naive, not be too trusting, but also not be too logical and analytical and feel like, oh my gosh, like I can only rely on what I can, you know, see, feel, and touch, and I can't rely on faith, you know? It's like our intuition may be speaking to us through more of a logical standpoint um, around this new moon. And I know that's, you know, that sounds a little contradicting, but like, it's the truth. Like, it's like, that's how we're going to be really feeling um, the 
the lessons of this new moon is through our intuition but through our logical minds through the realm of logic of like okay these are the circumstances these are the facts like yes i can trust that they're not always going to be this way but i need to face the facts right i need to accept the facts for what they are and not just throw myself you know into something just because like if you get a bad feeling about something around this new moon or something does not feel like aligned with you make sure you speak up about it because like i said mercury square saturn this could definitely be someone like not speaking up in some way you know like holding in what they think and holding in their opinion and then and then kind of ignoring you know the signs like hey this is not the right path you know and then something happens and you're like shit, you know like so this is changing our perception about an area of our lives and offering us an opportunity to look at it through a new lens, one where we are not blindsided, one where we are not blind to what's happening or trying to escape, ignore, ignore, or run from what's happening, right? Because this new moon's definitely gonna bring up a, a major theme of escapism, okay? And um, trying to like run from or ignore the facts or being confused about the facts, being under a delusion or an illusion in some kind of way. This new moon's offering us a chance to see through that if we can be like, okay, I'm going to accept that this is the reality of the situation. This is the facts of the situation. Doesn't mean it's always gonna be like this, right? And this, like, there's like a perfect example of this actually that I just experienced last week because I've already been kind of noticing some of these things coming up in my own life and other people's lives and just on social media. I've been seeing a lot in these topics lately. But um, so last week I did, you know, I went through this whole, you know, like uh, healing plant uh, <laughs> ceremony and it was absolutely beautiful um, all together. But at first, you know, it brought up a lot of like fear, you know, and I was like, holy shit, like, you know, where's this coming from? You know, like, and I, you know, I felt myself wanting to like avoid it. You know, I felt myself wanting to just like turn away from it and not look it in the eyes, you know? And cause it just felt so scary in my body. It was like, Ooh, you know, like don't like this, you know, like I was feeling pretty good before this, <laughs> like what happened to that, you know? So eventually though, I was like, no, Tawny, like we need to, we need to look at this, right? Like we need to look at this. And so, so I like took a deep breath and I just kind of went into it, you know, I just sunk into it like, okay, here we go. And it was beautiful because what ended up happening was there was enough space created to where I could have this internal dialogue with myself, this raw, true, real, no bullshit, no bullshitting myself, real internal dialogue with myself, right? Gemini, right? And I could... I, it was like I literally was having a conversation with myself. It kind of felt like my human and my higher self in a way, you know, like, and so I was, you know, like kind of scared about taking some of the next steps in my career and what I do here online because I have like big plans and stuff. And, you know, and just like the last time that I did this, you know, it worked out amazingly, but I also, you know, ended up going through some things in my personal life, which really like took a toll on me. And so I've been scared and I've had to really work on believing in myself again, like that I can do this and building myself back up and healing from everything, you know? And so, but what ended up happening was I was able in that dialogue with myself to get just completely honest, you know, to get completely honest, to ask myself the really raw and true questions. And I was able to get to this place of surrender and just trusting in, you know, the divine while also accepting where I was at and what I was feeling and, you know, how things were in that moment, you know? I, and basically it just came down to me saying, I don't feel ready. And that was so scary to me because I was putting all this pressure on myself to like, feel ready, but I just didn't at that time, you know, and I know, knew I would be soon, but I just didn't at that time. And that was so scary for me to like admit, you know, and so it's like this new moon may bring something like that up where you have to kind of get honest with yourself and face the facts about how you're feeling or a situation. And it doesn't mean that, you know, you like can't have faith in that thing. It doesn't mean that you can't trust the divine, um, but be willing 
to ask yourself questions, be willing to question things right now, right? Because that is actually how you will end up, you know, having a more evolved perspective and maybe even some kind of new revelation or awakening, right? Like you, you clear that space, you make that, you allow that space to be created. And this kind of goes into like, you know, once you can do that, then your connection to something higher, to your sense of faith or belief or ideals can even deepen through that, right? And so that's just a really cool example. Um, but another thing I really wrote down for this um, new moon is that, you know, the answers are always simple. And that's really a huge Gemini lesson. You know, the answers are always simple and it's us that complicate them. So if we're, if you're feeling very confused or like, you know, things are not making sense in terms of something that you're wanting an answer for around this Gemini new moon, just, you know, this is where the faith can come in, you know, where it may feel like you've been having faith and trust and belief in something for so long now, and you keep feeling like it's just not happening or the, the thing is delayed, right? That's also something we can really feel around this Gemini new moon. And so this could be an opportunity to really face some of those thoughts and fears that you have and accept them, which can be a total new restoration within your faith and belief, you know? And so that is how I really see this new moon in Gemini going. We're also going to see the creation of a new story. So something else that we could see come up is that it's almost like we're letting go of an old story that no longer is aligned, um, that we realize maybe wasn't even true all along. So it's like we have this story that we've been telling ourselves or this perspective that we've been looking at things through, right? Or this belief, right? That we've been telling ourselves of what we can and cannot do or what we want or what we don't want. And then we realize like, holy shit, like it's like our perception totally shifts and we see it completely differently now because maybe something comes up where we see through the bullshit that was clouding our judgment before, you know? That is basically what I have for this new moon in Gemini. If you watch all the way to this point, please, please, please comment badass down below because you are a mother effing badass, okay? Like, I appreciate you so much. And also, please tell me what you think. Please tell me if this relates, if you could see. If you're already seeing some of these themes come up at all, I would really, really love to hear what you guys have to say and how you guys are. Also, if you didn't see, I did upload the June 2023 horoscopes for the month. Um, so if you missed that, definitely go back and watch that for the month ahead. I would really appreciate it. Could use some support. And uh, with that being said, we are going to go ahead and jump into what this new moon is bringing for your rising sign very briefly. The timestamps are down below. I love you guys and let go. Alrighty, Gemini Risings. New moon, new you, boo, as I always say. This new moon in particular, though, is a little bit different. This is a new you that is coming with a little bit of a rose-colored glasses getting kind of ripped off moment, okay? So however you have been perceiving yourself, especially in terms of who you are, what you do in the world, your brand, your, your public image, your reputation, your career, you know, the kind of goals um, that you want to accomplish, the future you, how you want to envision yourself and your success in the world is really coming under a, a spotlight right now, really coming under examination with this new moon, where maybe you start seeing yourself a little bit differently, you know? Also, Saturn's going to retrograde right around this new moon too. Um, so whatever this new moon, kind of this new beginning that's kind of coming in for you is kind of an opportunity to look at a new side of something, to look at yourself and wherever it is you're going, your path and your career and the path ahead of you in a new lens, in a new way, from a new angle. Um, you know, it's like if you've been avoiding something or escaping something or not seeing something for what it is, it's like this is a time where you may need to get honest about it. You may ha need to have some difficult conversations about where you feel stuck or where you feel held back or whatever the case may be, you know, especially in terms of when and especially in terms of your career and your long-term goals and your public image and where you're going in, in in your life if it really suits you if it's really authentic to who you are and uh yeah how you're looking at that how you view yourself how other people view you uh in the public eye you know and so this new moon is a time where you are really kind of reevaluating these things and starting a new beginning 
with maybe something that you do feel is more aligned with you, you know? Um, and so just kind of be on the lookout for these themes because these are the themes that are likely going to come up for you that you're going to really kind of see, you know, this new moon's going to be a lot about you, a lot about your identity, your individuality, your style, the way that you express yourself, the way that you come off, your vibe, you know, things like that, your presence. And if you've been kind of confused about something to do with your career, <clears throat> or if you feel like you've been running from things to do in your career, or if you've been using your career to maybe escape, you know, this is a time where you're really kind of digging your heels back into who you are and facing the facts about how you feel and who you are and what, you know, whatever, you know, like whatever you need to face to kind of get back to you and, uh, you know, just keeping it simple instead of, you know, running from anything, right? Or escaping anything or avoiding anything or, you know, whatever, like, you know, where have you maybe even been sacrificing uh, your time, your energy or who you are um, for some greater ideal or greater vision or greater goal or whatever, you know, like, and so this is a time to get kind of clear mentally um, and on who you are, especially in terms of just who you are in, in your everyday life and and as a person and your place in this world, but also who you're showing up as in the world and the long-term goals and all of that that you have. So anyways, let me know down below, Gemini, if this relates. I would love, love, love to hear your feedback and what you're noticing with this new moon as always. <laughs> if you missed the beginning, go back and watch that. You're definitely not going to want to miss out on that if you are a Gemini rising. Um, it's going to go into so much more detail, so much more depth, and yeah, you don't want to miss that. And if you would like anything else from me, see the description below. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Alrighty, Cancer Risings, this new moon for you is happening in your 12th house. So this is definitely like everything I said in the beginning, if you missed that, go back and watch it. You're definitely not going to want to miss that baby, but like, wow. Okay. Like this new moon in your 12th house, this is definitely a new beginning that's coming with a lot of clearing out. Okay. A lot of purging, um, a lot of kind of facing the facts about different themes, especially themes involving addiction, substances, escapism, running away, avoidance, you know, um, victimhood or sacrifice or self-sabotage, self-undoing. Um, you know, this is a time to get really clear on your ideals and your beliefs as well with Neptune in your ninth house squaring this new moon and also Saturn in your ninth house. Um, squaring this new moon or not squaring this new moon but squaring mercury Alrighty, sorry about that cancer where were we now so this new moon is really kind of bringing up a lot about faith and trust and also your beliefs you know your world views the way that you see the world and you know potentially educational pursuits your sense of purpose and meaning and morals in life and also you know like old behaviors, old patterns, old cycles, subconscious, you know, things that are going on behind the scenes is what a lot of this is about for you. Okay, so definitely be on the lookout for that. But that is what I'm seeing for you, Cancer. Let me know down below if this resonates. I would love to hear your feedback. And we are going to move on to the next one. Alrighty, my lovely, fabulous fellow Leo Risings. This New moon for us is in the 11th house. So this is really going to bring up a lot in terms of friends, friend groups, different events, different gatherings, like, you know, bigger, wider groups of people, new people, acquaintances, and things like that. Now, there could be some shifty energy. Not everybody that maybe you're surrounding yourself with or that you're meeting around this time may be on the same page as you, okay? And you may begin to feel a little bit used in some way, or you may begin to feel like other people are not quite understanding your situation in some way. And this could also bring in financial situations as well. So you wanna really be careful around this time about who you trust financially or who you trust in terms of some kind of energy exchange with someone, whether it's a service or whatever, right? Like not everybody may have your best interest and not everybody may be someone that you can trust around this time. You also may have a lot of ideas and a lot of different, um, you know, situations, events, pursuits, that you are trying to follow through with at this time, but maybe you are feeling a little bit shaky in terms of 
trusting it or if it is reliable or confused about if it's really going to work out. And so that could be something else that you really see coming up around this time. Um, again, it's really, you know, if you didn't watch the first part of this video, definitely go back and do that because you'll likely relate to it um, and you're missing out a lot if you don't. But again, you know, this is kind of this like push and pull between faith versus being naive and versus, you know, accepting the facts versus being too analytical and not trusting at all, you know, like, and so that is kind of what we're dealing with here. So let me know how it goes down below Leo Risings. I would love, love, love to hear what you notice coming up for you with this new moon um, so we can compare notes. <laughs> so anyways, with that being said, we're going to move on to the next sign. I love you. Bye. Alrighty, Virgo Risings, this new moon is happening in your career sector. So this is all about your career, your public image, your reputation, where you're going in life, your future, your goals, your long-term vision for your life and what you're building towards in the world. You know, just stepping into adulthood, stepping into your future self, right? But this new moon is in a square with Neptune in your seventh house. And so it's like, maybe there's something going on in terms of relationships or the other people in your life that is somehow contradicting or confusing how you are going about things within your career and long-term goals it's like there's something that's not vibing well here together or maybe you're like you know having to see something clearly from a new perspective about your life and in terms of relationships you know like maybe there's been a blind spot or something that you've been avoiding um, in terms of you know your life and your relationships and your career and now it's like now you need to address that you know and so that is what's coming up for you as a virgo rising let me know if this relates down below i love you if you'd miss the beginning of this go back and watch it because it's going to give you a lot more detail a lot more depth and we're going to move on to the next sign. libra risings this new moon in gemini is happening in your ninth house of higher learning higher education your belief systems foreign travel all of that jazz your perspective on the world where you find purpose and meaning in life knowledge all of these types of things maybe legal pursuits but it is going to be squaring neptune in your sixth house and so this really looks like to me that you are getting kind of clear or more clear on your morals ethics values especially in terms of your life um, and especially in terms of maybe your job in some way and maybe you're feeling a little bit disconnected from your job, your health, and your day-to-day -day routine, or maybe there's some confusion there with what you want for yourself long-term or where you see yourself headed long-term or the things, the interests that you have, the things that you're learning, you know, it's like, is this something that you really want? You know, whatever it is that you're learning, that you're interested in, whatever path that you're following at this time, is this something you really want? Is this something you really believe in? Is this something you can really, you know, get behind? You know, uh, where are you not in alignment with your morals, your ethics, your values, things like that? And where is this somehow playing into your work, right? Or somehow playing into your day-to-day -day health, your day-to-day -day habits? and things like that. So that is what this new moon is really bringing up for you as a Libra rising. If you missed the beginning of this video, you're missing out a lot. So go back and watch it. It was, we went into a lot of depth. Okay, baby. So I got you. So anyways, thank you for watching Libra. Let me know down below what comes up for you for this new moon. I'd love to hear and hear what's going on with you guys. And we're going to move on to the next one. Alrighty, Scorpio darlings, this new moon is happening in your eighth house. So this is really gonna be a new beginning that is really related to your financial life, building wealth, investments, shared resources and shared finances, anything that you owe or that is owed to you. This could also bring in your partner's finances, other people's money, how you are involved with other people's money or how they're involved with your money, honey, right? Like it could also be that too. <laughs> so anyways, this could also be new beginnings in terms of learning more about these things, about these different financial topics and how to move forward or connecting with new people, you know, because of some of these, you know, topics in your life. But this new moon is going to square Neptune in your fifth house of love, romance, dating, sexuality, pleasure, joy, fun, entertainment, and passion, and children. And so this could be a time where somehow that is getting roped into this, where you're trying to make a very logical decision forward or logical step forward, but maybe you're being a little bit blindsided or a little bit, you know, like you're not seeing things too clearly because 
of some kind of pursuit that you're having fun with or something that you're doing for entertainment or a way in which you're maybe escaping um, you know something that's very logical or something that you're trying to you know fix through an aspect of fun um, it could also be that you're not seeing something clearly with dating romance children fun entertainment etc and so it's like you know this is a time where your the balance between faith and logic especially to do with your finances and other people's money versus um, having fun and doing something that you want to do um, is kind of you know being tested and so anyway so let me know down below Scorpio if any of that sounds like it's ringing true or resonating and what does come up for you I would really love to hear your feedback and what you're noticing on this new moon also if you did not catch the beginning of this video I went into a lot more detail about what this is bringing and then you can just apply it to your eighth and fifth house so anyways I love you and I'll see you in the next one alrighty Sagittarius this new moon for you is happening in your seventh house of relationships baby so this is all about your relationships with other people and other people in your life you're going to notice a lot of themes coming up here uh, to do with those areas of life of other people in relationships now the issue is like you know maybe you're trying to really do something logical in a relationship or maybe this is a time where you're paying a little bit more attention to the details and the the logical answer of certain situations or questions that you have or there could be a new perception forming in terms of your relationships with other people or just the you know intimate relationship that you're in like with a partner or something but the square to neptune is happening and that is happening from your seventh to your fourth house of home and family so this could be something coming in where it's like maybe you've been hiding something or maybe you've been keeping something more private or not really looking at something fully or maybe avoiding something maybe something from the past or something going on with your personal life or your private life or your home life or your family in some way or maybe there's something that you know like you've been kind of negating in some way or escaping in some way or running from in some way and so there's something here that's kind of calling you to look at it and kind of accept the facts and the feelings behind it both right and so if you didn't listen to the beginning of the video definitely go back and do that because it's going to give you a whole lot more context and a whole lot more depth and detail on what this new moon is bringing and then you just can apply it to your relationships and home and family life so anyways hopefully this was helpful sag let me know what you experience down below and if you experience any of these themes coming up in your life i would love to hear your feedback and yeah thank you for watching we're gonna move on to the next time Alrighty, capricorn risings this new moon for you is happening in your sixth house of work health and your day-to-day -day routine so these are the things that you do to keep up with yourself or keep up with your life or keep up with your schedule on a day-to-day -day basis the 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 maintenance that you need in your day-to-day -day life the structure that you need in your day-to-day -day life to keep up with things you know and this new one's happening in gemini so maybe you're learning new things about this or you are trying to look at new sides to do with your schedule you're asking a lot of questions and you know there's this new logical beginning that's trying to happen here but this new moon is squaring neptune in your third house so it could feel like you're very unorganized or you're very messy because of other things going on in your day-to-day -day environment that are keeping your focus from the things that you really want to be focusing on to do with work health and getting your shit together basically and so this is a time to kind of look a little bit more at the facts right and not so much as what you imagine or wish or hope to be true and i mean you can still have faith in all of that that things will work out but it is a time to look a little bit more at the details of a situation and accept what is right in front of your face and also like you know get your shit together basically you know are you like running from avoiding and negating or escaping things in your day-to-day -day life in your day-to-day -day environment like things that you know projects that you've been needing to get done or whatever because maybe you've been out having fun or out exploring or out you know like working on creative pursuits or whatever which is great but there may be other things that need your attention at this time and if you can organize them in a logical way and take a more logical approach then you may find a lot of help with this new moon um, because that's what it's bringing in for you so anyways if you miss the beginning you're missing out on a lot you're going to relate to that a lot it gives a lot more detail goes a lot more in depth gives a lot more examples and ways to work with this energy all you have to do is apply it to your area of work health and routines and your day-to-day -day environments and all of that so anyways 
Love you, Capricorn. Let me know down below if this resonated for you and what you do see coming up with this new moon. And I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Aquarius. This Gemini new moon is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, dating, pleasure, enjoyment, entertainment, children, happiness, like where you find your heart's desires. And so this could be a time where you're very curious and maybe you're learning a lot of new things to do with your heart, to do with things that make you feel a sense of joy and happiness in your life, or maybe you're dating, or maybe you're meeting new people, or maybe you're doing a little bit more to have fun in your life. Maybe you're exploring your childlike curiosity a little bit more, right? And with this new moon though, there is a square to Neptune, and that is happening in your second house. And so what this tells me is that there are things that maybe you're wanting to do for fun, right? And to kind of explore these more childlike curious sides of yourself, and to have fun or date or do things that bring you more pleasure in your life, but there may be a part of you that is negating, escaping, or ignoring or avoiding certain big financial questions, you know? And, um, you know, you've, you've been learning how to have a lot of faith and trust here in your financial department, but right now it's time to kind of just look at the facts, right? And so there could be things going on that maybe um, you're wanting to do for fun, but maybe you're not actually checking to see how expensive this is going to be or how much this is going to cost or what resources and what assets you're going to need to do this, you know? And so because you've just been kind of leaving it up in the air. And so this Gemini new moon is like, hey, there may be a smarter way to do this or let's get a little bit more logical about this and face the facts of this situation here um, and find a better solution for it, right? Instead of just ignoring it or avoiding it or whatever, right? So it's like maybe there's something that you really want and you're kind of ignoring the effect it may have on you financially or on your resources or on your priorities in some way. And this new moon is kind of bringing that up for you to be aware of and just accept the facts of it. You know, it doesn't mean that you can't have faith that it's all going to work out, but just be real about it, you know? And so that is what I'm seeing for you, Aquarius. Let me know if this relates down below and what you do see coming up. And if you missed the beginning of this video, go back and watch it because it's going to add a lot more context to that. And all you got to do is just add it in of your fifth house and your second house, you know, like, but you're probably going to relate a lot to it. So anyways, love you guys. Happy new moon. And I'll see you in the next one. Alrighty, Pisces, this new moon in Gemini is happening in your fourth house of your home, your family, your past, your personal life, your private life, your foundation, and your living situation. So those are all big themes you can start noticing come up at the time of this new moon and for the next couple weeks after. Now, the issue here is that you are being, you know, kind of you know, influenced, maybe, I don't know, that's probably not right, the right way to say it, but you're in a situation where maybe you're trying to go about something in a more logical way or solve a problem or something along those lines, right? Now, the issue is, is that this new moon is squaring Neptune in your sign in your first house. And so maybe there are some things that you have been kind of ignoring, negating, or not facing, or not wanting to deal with, or escaping, um, or that you've been a little confused or all over the place about, or that you haven't been quite understanding. And somehow that is bringing up some challenge of some problems that need to be solved, or some kind of new beginning that needs to happen in terms of your home and family life, or your personal and private life in some way, right? And so, you know, you could find that there is a very you know, a situation that arises that needs you to be a little bit more logical and a little bit less like, oh, I don't know, who cares, you know, like a little bit less like, you know, just go with the flow and it'll figure itself out. Um, it may need you to kind of face it and accept the facts of a situation here and stop kind of ignoring it or running from it or avoiding it, okay? So that is what is coming up for you for this new moon, Pisces. If you missed the beginning of this video, go back and watch this because it's going to explain a lot more that you need to hear, okay? And I hope you guys have a good new moon. Let me know if this relates down below and I'll see you in the next one. Alrighty, Aries rising. This new moon for you is happening in your third house. So this is all about your environments, your day-to-day -day environments, the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis the people, places, and things that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, learning endeavors, learning new things, short travels, you know, creative projects are just different things that you're interacting with and working on in your day-to-day -day life at the moment or interests or hobbies or skills that you're kind of having or practicing right now. Now, this new moon is a new beginning in this area, so it's really showing you what else there is to interact with around you and more options, more ways to see things, more perspectives to look through about your environments and about the people and places and things that are in your life. And so this could be a great time to like 
take a short little trip to a new place that is right around the corner from you that you never had even experienced before or go to a, a new event around you and just gain new perceptions, gain new connections, gain new information from your environment. But this new moon is squaring Neptune in your 12th house. So you do have to make sure that you are not escaping your day-to-day -day environment or present moment, right? This is a time to really just look at the solid facts and the logic of what your circumstances and what your day-to-day -day life is showing you and accept that. Like, where do you need to maybe get more organized or, you know, take a logical standpoint on something instead of avoiding it or running from it, right? Because this could be kind of showing you where maybe you are being a victim to your circumstances or maybe you are letting your circumstances kind of run you instead of you taking charge and, you know, cleaning things up and facing the facts of a situation, you know? And so these are some of the things that could come in at this time for this new moon. So let me know down below if that re relates and what you do notice happening in your life areas. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback. And if you missed the beginning, go back and watch that because you're really, really, really gonna relate to it. You're really missing out on a lot. If you did not catch the beginning, it like you're just gonna relate to it. So just trust me, go back and watch it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Taurus Risings, this new moon in Gemini is happening in your second house of money, income, priorities, resources, assets, and finances, what you have and what you own, right? And what are your priorities with these things, right? So this new moon can really be bringing in a new beginning that is having you take a very logical and factual look at this area of your life maybe you have not been looking at it that much maybe you've been maybe avoiding it a little bit you know avoiding your circumstances with your finances your assets your resources a little bit your priorities you know and maybe it's time to kind of face the facts here in this situation and it doesn't mean that you can't have a sense of faith or that you can't follow through on creative visions and ideals that you have for uh, the things that you want to do and the goals and the dreams and the wishes and the, you know, different social aspirations that you have with, you know, this new moon squaring Neptune in your 11th house. But it is a time to at least, you know, accept the facts or accept the, <clears throat> the data. <clears throat> Sorry, losing my voice, but accept the data that this new moon is bringing in for you and showing you right? Doesn't mean that something's not going to work out and that you need to lose hope or have doubt or whatever. Um, but it is a time of being like, okay, like maybe I need to structure this a little bit differently and take a little bit more of a logical approach instead of just being willy nilly about it or instead of avoiding it or instead of just, you know, having this like great imaginative vision about what I want, but like not actually taking the logical actions and steps to getting there, right? And so that is what I see for this moon for you guys, Taurus. Definitely let me know if this relates and what you are noticing come up for this new moon. If you missed the beginning, you're missing out on a lot. I went into a lot more depth, so you do not want to miss the beginning of this video. You're going to relate to it. So anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful new moon, and that is the end of this video. I will see you in the next one.